American artist James Castle, who was born in 1899 and died in 1977. We're looking at an untitled work. It's a horizon with a farmscape that is also undated. It was created on found paper and with soot, and it measures about six and a half by six inches. And so let's start with looking at the surface and looking at the paper and noticing its shape, how it has irregular edges. And when you look at the center, you notice a rectangular crease and some lines that stem out from it that suggest we're seeing an envelope that's been perhaps opened up. And we can wonder when we look at this, uh, where did Castle find this particular paper? Was it already in this condition when he found it? Did he rip it and create the shape? Did he save the paper for later use or did he work on it immediately? We know that Castle uh, worked on found paper and that he did keep paper for uh, long periods of time. So thinking about this, this sort of this raw material as having had a, a previous sort of life before Castle identified it as uh, what he wanted to use to make his art. Um, in front of us, we have a, a landscape. About halfway up, we have this sort of horizon line. There's a building, a portion of a building with a roof on the left and various structures sort of dot the primarily the right half of the composition, sort of off in our distance. Um, it's very still. There's no uh, real human presence that we can see. We don't see uh, a person. We don't see necessarily any identifiable uh, tools that might give us a sense of the work that was happening on site. We don't see uh, any animal life, we know dogs or cats or chickens or other, other types of life that we might associate with the outdoors and with uh, nature or the farm. Perhaps the closest that we see to a hint of a human presence is this, this sort of uh, form that we can see kind of by the building on the left side. Uh, and there's a detail of this as well. It's something that didn't stand out to me at first, but as I continue to look more and more at this work, I thought, well, I wonder, is this, did he alter the course of his drawing? Was this sort of a, a perhaps a human face, or am I just uh, seeing that myself uh, in the landscape? So it's an, um, interesting to think about uh, that as well. Is it a trick of the eye? Uh, so in looking at this work, it calls to question sort of where are we and what can we know about this landscape that we're looking at. And so this brings us sort of back to the life of James Castle. Here we see a, a map of Idaho on the bottom and some images on the top of uh, Garden Valley, Idaho, which is where Castle was born in 1899. He was the fifth of seven children he was born deaf and his older sister Nellie later lost her hearing when she developed a case of the measles. From around 1910 to 15, uh, Castle attended the Idaho State School for the Deaf and the Blind along with Nellie for a part of that time. Despite some schooling, he never really learned to communicate in a traditional manner, meaning speaking or writing. We know that he made art starting at a young age and that his parents worked as postmasters and store owners in Garden Valley and that that location, the post office, was a, uh, a social center for the region. So even though he was in this remote, remote um, area, he still had a connection with many uh, people who would have come in to shop or to use the post office and he would have seen and had access to all of the types of materials that would have come into the post office, the mail, advertisements and so forth. We can really notice that texture that we saw uh, when we began uh, this looking 
the way that the, uh, the ground, the darkness of the ground contrasts with the lightness of the sky, this contrast, white, dark, presence, absence, they're dramatic lines in the sky. There's some that sort of uh, move down almost into the horizon. There's another that's almost sort of a side V in the sky. Um, the more you really look into these expanses, it's really amazing to see how much is happening there and uh, the way he's so the way that he's using um, his materials, how they all sort of work together to create this, uh, this really evocative sort of mood. We know from the label and from uh, Castle's materials that he created his works in a mixture of soot from a wood burning fireplace and saliva and that they were applied to paper with materials such as nails and sticks. And some of his works incorporate color, which was formed by wetting uh, paper, pieces of tissue to extract that color. You can really see how much is actually going on in this space. You can see there are these uh, areas of blue to the left and then sort of some flecks that appear uh, throughout. There's also some sort of orangish, orangish uh, smudging or marks. Um, suggestion perhaps of uh, sky or landscape um, aspects that appear above the buildings. This is a double-sided drawing, so we'll take a peek at what's on the other side of the drawing, which is equally uh, wondrous. Uh, Castle was a prolific creator, he worked daily, he enjoyed showing his art to others. He was known to have organized his work by uh, size, to wrap it, bundle it, and then sort of place it in walls, on rafters, and in other sort of uh, protected spaces. And so he also sometimes created displays of his artworks and uh, would even document them. And so uh, that's what we're seeing here uh, on the other side of this image. You can see some of his uh, constructions of figures on the lower left. You can see other drawings. He uh, is known to have displayed favorite drawings in his working spaces. So we have this sort of beautiful uh, glimpse into uh, his world. Here are some other examples of his work that kind of show the uh, types of objects that he was, and subjects that he was interested in. We can also think about how is it that we given um, the time and location and um, sort of everything, how is it that we have even come to know the work of James Castle? And so sort of the, the short answer to that would be that Castle's nephew um, attended art school at the Oregon Museum of Art School and um, showed his work to one of his teachers. There was interest and they organized an exhibition that resulted in the first exhibition of his work in 19, around 1952.